Holy shit. So I had to uh, delay the recording a little bit because somebody wanted to do the tuck during Goodbye Horses scene <laughs> from Silence of the Lambs and also Clerks 2, I guess, is also in that. Yeah, true, <laughs> Listen, true. Jay does that shit. <laughs> Listen, you've just, you've got to recreate, you got to keep yourself entertained <clears throat> during this quarantine, okay? What's it look like for I'm sure doing, motherfucker? Well, you're not tucking, that's for sure. <laughs> not, a day I mean, not in front of the right? camera. Might have passed through that already. I got my, I got my Bevs. I got my, I got a koozie. I got some, I got my Jimmy Buffett Pandora station. I'm vacation dad mode, boy. <laughs> it looks like I it's working out very well for you. You know what? It's not doing bad. I got my Wii U set up. I can play some, uh, some Wii Gull. Got my quarantine beard. I'm, I'm, I'm hype. Nice. Hell yeah. All right. Is this, uh, these the are already. That I'm sitting in? Can Do you what? Hear it? Um, can you hear the chair that I'm sitting in? A lot of no. people have told me it sounds no. like I'm farting. Hold on. Wait, listen. I can only kind of hear you farting. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, no, now everybody's going to think I was trying to fart, but it was a. Uh, you, you are. You I mean, look, you're the one that called attention to it. All right, right, let's start the show. Here. <laughs> I, I got to get a new uh, title photo. I think it's just going to be me wearing my fucking Lego head, and this is going to have Marvin's room over it. Hey, welcome to Marvin's room. <laughs> hey, Marvin, how's it going? It's going great, bud. I'm I'm here with my two good buddies, the guys who um, have a show that I was a guest star on a couple of times that actually made me feel like I could do this. We got Woo. we got Marshall and Berg from fucking <laughs> Theft Mart. Um, I'd like to start this off. Berg looks like he's about to. Like, just the way you have the lighting, you look like you're about to divulge government <laughs> secrets about, like, Watergate. I wish I had one of those voice distorters, you know? Yes. Like they, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. To protect yeah, the innocent. They don't want you to know what I know. <clears throat> and then, uh, we got Marshall, who, as I determined earlier, hey. looks like, uh, <laughs> he just shouldn't walk down certain alleys in Chicago. <laughs> Or also, if Penn Jillette decided to really just looks, like, cut the hottest rap album of the summer. Marshall <laughs> looks like he is the pirate king of Queen Anne Street in the French Quarter. I think... Uh, I'll allow it. Not, <laughs> I, I like this... Uh, this little roast here, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's Look, not a roast. You're my, you're my two sweet boys. I miss you. All right. <laughs> we oh, miss you. Miss you Ooh, how, how y'all been? How you been holding up, man? I like to start these off by just asking how people are doing, because uh, that's a host thing to do, right? So Berg, we'll start with you, bud. How you been? How you been living in the quarantines? Well, uh, I'm wearing a funny hat that you can't see, so. <laughs> That should tell you everything you need to know. No, I'm fine. Um, you know, it's fine. Uh, I would say I do more work at home than I do at work, which is a weird thing. A weird, like, it's not that I don't do work at, at work. It's just that I tend to do more of it here because I don't have that, like, oh, I'm going to go home now type of idea. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, making do, getting through it. You know, hanging out, being groovy. Hell yeah, Marshall. You? Marshall, how about you, man? I'm doing pretty good. Been doing a lot of work from home, and uh, you know, just uh, living life, getting fat, pretty much the quarantine life. You know, no, that feels rough. I I, know I have to say, Berg looks like a '90s cartoon boss, like because you don't see his face, kind of like oh, the yeah. fall from. Uh, 
Dr. Claw um, from Inspector Gadget. Gadget. Yeah. Yeah. Because you just, yes. you, just, you know, smoking the cigar and like, yeah, you should be like, bring me Inspector Gadget. I was about to say, that's why, again, you need the voice modulator. You should be like, I'll get you Gadget. <laughs> <laughs> be like, whoa. <laughs> that was awesome. I'll get you. Yeah, see, I can't get it like that anymore. I'll get you Gadget. <laughs> no, not the same. <laughs> Good deal, bud. Yeah, what about you? What about you, good sir? Oh, well, uh, uh, I've, I've still been working. I'm still just doing my thing. I got a podcast now, in case you uh, you guys didn't notice. Um, no shit. Congratulations. You two, thanks. You two are the first non-stand-up comedian people I've had on a Friday show. Well, Friday slash Saturday, because we'll probably go tomorrow. So... You're, you're Listen, that's Marvin's a Room, episode pressure. one. I didn't want to have to keep hassling stand-up comedians to do something every Friday and doing two of these a week and calling them two different things. We're not sponsored by Bud Light. Um, <laughs> are we? Oh. Um, calling, having two different shows, doing one in the midweek and doing one on the weekend was getting a little bit weird just with editing and, and I just didn't want to do it anymore. So now it's called Marvin's Room and we're just going to do it twice a week. That way it doesn't matter who's on what. I can do a blend. I can have stand-up comedians and non-stand-up comedians who are just funny and cool people and do a little, have a little, little something like this. Well, this action going on right here. That's if this ends up being audio only, only, I have my fingers interlaced like it's a little, little finger orgy. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the door. Nobody's there because they're socially <laughs> isolating. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like. All I gotta be careful. Somebody's gonna think that we're like either flashing gang signs or like. <laughs> I know. I was doing, just about to do or like blood we're, we're, or we're Naruto. Oh yeah. Like no, my luck. I'll <laughs> fucking. I'll try to do something like this and just make clones of myself by accident. Like, <laughs> I'll just turn into Naruto. It'll be fine. Wait, is Naruto that guy that interviews rappers and knows everything about their lives? No, it's a ninja yeah. anime oh, where they have Nardwar. to do hand signs to like oh, channel their yeah. chi. And then they do like ninja spells where they can like breathe fire and make clones themselves. Oh, that's cool. Marshall, you were doing this earlier. Let's see. <laughs> oh yeah. Magic. Wow. Yeah, am I am I blowing your mind, internet? Yeah. But yeah, I've uh, I've been on these guys' podcasts. Be sure to go give them a listen. It's called Theft Mart. You can find it on the podcasty type places like the Spotify's and the such. And uh, I've done two episodes of their show, so I these guys are playing catch up now to be on my fucking show a couple times. Hell yeah! Um, and yeah. I, I would love to be on your guys' show again. They mostly talk about work in retail. If you want to hear some of my Kmart stories, those of you that have heard my stand up have heard me tell some of those stories already. Um, like the Girl Scout cookie story, that's that's a good example. Um, my secret garden story about the the hidden bathroom that my brother told me about. <laughs> Did I tell you guys that story? Did I ever talk about that on the podcast? I don't remember. Yes, you did. You did tell us about yeah, the Girl Scout. Your special toilet? Yeah, yeah, the special toilet. Well, the Girl yeah. Scout cookie story, I do that in my set. So that's a joke that's like, a lot of it's fabricated. And, and it starts off, um, you know, I used to work at Kmart back in the day. And I, I love Girl Scout cookies, but I'm terrified of Girl Scouts. They're like the, the, the Viet Cong of tiny children. And, like, I went in there one day to work, and, and it was quiet, it was too quiet, you know, like, one of those types of things. Sure. And uh, all of a sudden, they just, like, jumped down from the rafters, like, SEAL Team 6. They're just throwing cookies like ninja stars. There's Samoa shrapnel <laughs> flying through the air. One of my friends got tagged in the neck by a tag along. I went over to aisle 6. I matrix dodged two thin mints. And then I came up, and then the third mint, the magic mint, came from back and to the left. Hit me right in the side. That's right. I made a JFK assassination reference. What about it? It's 2020. Is it Press is it front. time to get over it? I was yeah, right. Liberals. I was pressed <laughs> up against the ragu. <laughs> right. I was pressed up against the pasta sauce. And when you when you're bleeding out that bad and there's pasta sauce everywhere, you don't know what's ragu and what's ragu. All you know is that it's red and there's meat in it. And it just goes from there. It's just it's just a stupid no, because the whole point about working at Kmart was like how creepy and scary it was already. Like, the walls bled every Halloween. Martha Stewart's ghost roamed the halls. Mind you, she's still very much alive. <laughs> well, hold on. <clears throat> let's, let's talk about this for a second, because I have oftentimes felt like 
one of the deciding factors that determined the success of Walmart and Target versus uh, Kmart and Sears is that, and maybe this is a function of, um, of, of just how they were in their later years, but Kmart, even as a kid, Kmart was always creepy. The color scheme, the oh, setup, it always felt like you were in the middle of a horror film or a zombie apocalypse. Oh, dude, I got whereas, the crap scared out of me on multiple occasions. Yeah, whereas like, <laughs> if you go to a Walmart, it's always just so bright and like Target is so you know red and friendly. Well, that's the thing, and like Meyer, Meyer's the same way because they have like they have. Well, Meyer does the same thing Kroger does. Meyer has a lot of like brown floors. Yeah. Like Kroger has that like brownish grayish floor. Meyer has a lot of that too, where they have the normal tile, but like in the the clothing and housewares, it's this like plastic like faux wood. And I realized when you have those floors like that, the the light when it shines off the floor like like reflects off. It's sure. not as it's not as harsh. Um, and yeah. I even get that I even get that from Walmart. Like Walmart's bright enough that like it doesn't do that. Kmart had the Walmart floors where it was all white tile throughout, but their lights weren't as bright. Their lights were just a shade dimmer. And that's where it, that's where it gets that that's where it got that feel. So like right. I definitely agree with that in a huge way. As someone who 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 witnessed it firsthand. The creepiness of it. It's just yeah. it was just, uh, like. Yeah, it always like whenever you went into to Kmart, you always felt like you were in like a children of the corn type of horror film. That's or literally you felt like you were in like a, a zombie, you know, apocalypse. Like I've gotta catch, you know, I've gotta stock up on these supplies before the zombies come and attack the yeah. store. Whereas if you go to like a Walmart, you're just like, oh, okay. Here's your just general variety white trash. <laughs> but at least well, you and, feel and that's the thing. The thing that even kept Kmart going as long as it did was um God, it was layaway, to be honest. And then when Walmart was finally like because I guess Walmart had layaway and then got rid of it because I know that because disgruntled customers would be like, the only reason we even come here is because y'all got layaway. If you didn't have layaway, if Walmart had layaway, we'd go to Walmart. <laughs> And I was just like, all right. Funny story about Layaway and Walmart. A buddy of mine in college, he, uh, his family was poor, you know. And so for Christmas, he helped his parents buy his siblings, um, like a PlayStation 2 and, uh -huh. and I think something else and some games. And they put it on Layaway. And the semi-truck that it was sitting on got stolen. And oh, wow. Walmart oh, no. <clears throat> Walmart being Walmart didn't have record of what they had like or what like they had the amount you know like they had they didn't know they didn't have the amount because they just they, they just had their names they were paying you know something on layaway and because I guess they were on paper records still and so they were just like yeah we had a tv playstation 2 and x like so they ended up with almost like a thousand dollars worth of items that Walmart was like okay we're sorry here you go you know merry christmas all because the fucking semi truck got stolen. Now, wow. What's crazy about that is one, <clears throat> back in the early two thousands, fraud was a damn fine and damn easy thing to do. Oh yeah. And, <laughs> and two, people did that shit all the time. I got a story about that too. Think about that. Somebody stole a fucking semi trailer. That's some ballsy ass That's shit. That's some right like there. Scarface, what, like fencing level shit, like. <laughs> yeah, like what are they? Like, oh, it fell off a truck. Use? Like sell the stuff. Yeah, sell it at. Yeah, at, I mean yeah. it's Christmas time, right? And so that was the early two thousands. So you had Craigslist and stuff. So getting rid of it was oh, just yeah. crazy. Oh yeah. eBay. Yeah. Yeah, because so, I mean that was still the. I mean it's the internet still very much is like an electronic wild west, but like back then it definitely was. Like there was no. Oh, regulation listen, no, whatsoever no. like no we're not, shit. Even, we're not even close to that my freshman year was the year 2000 man and we had fucking napster and we had winamp and you talk about the wild wild west we were looking at you know rotten.com and consumption junction and you know the shit that they were posting on those sites were was just evil it was just pure evilness but it was but there was, it was totally <laughs> unregulated you know what i mean yeah, so it's like this is great. Now I can't even find a good, decent copy of Two Girls One Cup. <laughs> I love how you say a decent copy, like you're getting it on, like <laughs> not like, even Blu-ray. You're getting it on DVD. Well, you're I get mean, the collector's listen. edition with the, uh, you know, 
director. I just, I just imagine you having like an old like 2006 portable DVD player, and it's you, you hit the button for the tray to open, but you gotta force it because it's sticky. <clears throat> like it's one of the. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just got he's just got burned uh, viral videos that are disgusting and terrible. Oh yeah, the lemon party. Oh, Go see. Like, what's the weirdest? What's the weirdest thing you ever saw on the internet? Oh God. I've been on the internet a while, but yeah, that's hard to hard yeah. to pin down. Me I, I, I know exactly what what the weirdest thing I ever saw. I mean, I mean, I I've accidentally gone to Lemon you know, Party before. I, you know, I was on I was on Funny Junk and and 4chan and stuff when I was fourteen. And, you know, I, I definitely weird, accidentally clicked. I definitely clicked a link that went to where it wasn't advertised, and it wasn't a Rickroll. We'll just put it that way. The, the way that uh, you put it, though, like, I almost feel like I know, like, I've seen Lemon Party, you've seen Lemon Party, you've seen Lemon Party. So it's almost one of those things where it's like, it's not even weird anymore. It's no, that's lot, true, honestly, you know? yeah. Yeah, Lemon where Party, it's like, I, I would even, watch over and over and over. However, anything. I can honestly it's say to this weird. day, I've never <laughs> seen Two Girls, One Cup, and I'm a little bit proud of that. I haven't either. Because it's, it's really? almost like an internet <laughs> rite of passage, but I feel like... I feel like having accidentally gone to Lemon Party and and Meat Spin, I feel like I've hit. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I've I've yeah. like I've paid my internet dues. You know what I mean? Like no, see you you but see I also realized too, you gents are a little bit younger, so you weren't. I mean, you weren't really surfing the internet when it was really truly the wild wild west where you could see that's true. Yeah, really I, weird things I, that were kind of creepy and freaky. I was a teenager when like viral sensations were. Like in their golden age, like starting. Yeah. Like I was, I was yeah. like 13, 14 when like Ultimate Showdown of Ultimate Destiny on like albinoblacksheep.com and like 55 and like Salad oh, yeah. Fingers, like when all that shit Ebon took off. I was in like, one. yeah, exactly. I was in, I was in like middle school, like early high school. Like I remember I was a freshman in high school when Bo Burnham like first took off on YouTube. So oh, like wow. that was like that was like I just the internet hit me at like just the right time. <laughs> you got the you got the nice safe version of it. Kind of. I mean, it was a just it was it, yeah. it showed you just enough to f make you feel like wow, look, I can't believe what I'm seeing. But it well, wasn't yeah. weird or crazy enough that you're just like, okay, that's enough internet for my lifetime. Yeah. Well, <laughs> dude, yeah. I mean, I got I got the oh, trust me, when I first started getting on YouTube, I was like. 13 like it was like because let's put it this way i was born in 92 so we're talking yeah 2006 you know i was 14 and uh i thought for the first about month that i used youtube that it was only for music videos for some reason and boy howdy was i wrong and i learned that very quickly <laughs> the back in the wild wild west days of youtube <laughs> that's so cute I'm Back thinking, before vloggers and fucking beauty people just ruined everything. 2000 and, 2006, huh? Yeah. <laughs> See, that, was, I'm, yeah I'm, that was that was the time when people started going, okay, maybe we should tone down the internet. <laughs> yeah, I have to admit, <laughs> yeah. hashtag I'm baby. <sighs> well, I'll tell you the weirdest thing that I ever saw ah, yeah, yeah. was... Oh. <laughs> video it was a video of this guy he was a you know a goth looking dude mm -hmm. and uh he was I wearing do. a um <clears throat> wedding dress and he was in a dark attic and there was a pig's head and he was caressing it and he was rubbing it all over his body and he was sticking his fingers in weird holes and <laughs> nothing sexual, his. mind you but it was just so creepy, and it had this like weird, creepy music um, that, oddly enough, I recognized because my freshman year, I lived in a suite, and uh, my suite mates were the were two polar opposite guys, and one of my suite mates, Tom, would literally play music that was designed to make people crazy, because he thought he was he was like trying to make his suite mate crazy because they didn't get along. Okay. Um, <laughs> And, and I recognized do. one of those songs as, and it was just, it was the weirdest fucking video. And it was, it just went on and on and on. It was it's still to this day, the creepiest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. So. Have you ever seen those, uh, the weird uh, mukbang videos where it's like one woman and she's blindfolded 
and she's yeah. eating like all this weird stuff she's like, eating, like yeah and then and there's all these conspiracy theories like people think she's like kidnapped like she's there against her will to eat. Uh, yeah yeah pretty crazy <laughs> all the old the good old days of the internet well uh one that uh i think i think marshall you'll know is shay saint shay saint john oh my god yes yeah. Um, those were some of the first. Vi- I mean, I've known I've known your brother for a very long time, but that was like when we were in middle school and high school. He and I would quote that the hand thing at each other. Like, hey, Shay, still do that. Still getting that hand. How are you? How are you doing that? How are you doing that? Like, those creep me out because, for the sole reason, you never get like at least Salad Fingers has context. Like Salad Fingers yeah. is like you know who the creator is. You know that it's something made by a creator. Like, you know, like, a guy made that. Those Shea St. John videos, they exist, and that's it. Like, the person that made that did not do anything else that, that we're aware of. It's just those. Well, he, uh... They were as far as I know, I might like, be wrong. I'm probably it, 100% wrong. It goes, like, way into the rabbit hole because uh, he had this whole, like, he had a web page and then those videos. Yeah. And, like, nobody knew. And even the descriptions, like, back then in YouTube, you know, like, mm-hmm. a lot of times if they uploaded a joke video or a prank, you know, the description would have something. But the descriptions were even just as bizarre as the video yeah. and stuff. And yeah, those are those are great. There's a there's a couple documentaries about it. Chase St. John and the uh, the guy who created it and stuff. And, I kind of want to watch those. Uh, I kind of want to find. It's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Hollywood all already ruined Slender Man for us. <laughs> those damn make a Slender Man movie ten years after it's popular. <laughs> Do you remember you the John one... Tyler uh, internet phenomenon? No, no, that's that oh, must have been before my time. Yeah. The John Titor, you should, so look up John Titor, it's T-I-D-O-R. Basically, it was this guy that went on a bunch of uh, message boards and claimed to be from the future and and made a whole bunch of predictions. And what sucks about it is that, like, a, a small portion of his predictions actually came true, and they're specific enough that you, uh, they're, they're specific enough that you're like, wow, like, Maybe he got lucky, but maybe he didn't. But then, but then they're you know because they're not like general things, right? They're they're very, yeah. very specific. But the whole thing is just weird. And and what's funny about it is essentially he comes back in time uh, to find an old was it to find an old Apple or old computer part or something hmm. for for a museum, and that's why he comes back. It's check it out. It's fucking wild. There's a whole R slash John Titer. Yeah. T I T O R. It's like uh, The Simpsons predicting the future. Yeah. I've seen oh that. yeah. Yeah. Those are pretty wild. Which means I guess our our next president's gonna be Lisa Simpson. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like, we incurred but quite the debt from President Trump. The thing is, is that you know when you've been on for 20 plus years and you put on what 20 25 plus episodes every single year yeah you're bound i mean you're bound to make up shit that's gonna come true oh yeah and that's what the creators said too like that's what like matt groaning and they the crew said they were just like we just thought of something just stupid and outlandish we didn't know he was actually going to become the fucking president we just thought it'd be funny <laughs> that donald trump would be the president now that he is it's clearly very much not funny right exactly so it's, i just it's saw just a one thing of those, today like, I, I just saw a thing today the onion uh put out an article about a month ago and it was like uh a guy buys every known cleaning product to um, in, uh, to inject inject himself. Oh and, God! And it was just like it's one of those things where it's just like okay, a lot of people are actually trying to defend that. By the way, they're actually trying to say they're like, oh, he was clearly being sarcastic. Oh, he didn't actually say that. Like he literally said, disinfectants kill it in a minute, and we're looking into it. Ways of in through injection or other means to get it in the body like they like it's it's the fact that people are calling it fake news when we have video of him like saying it they're just like he didn't actually say that if you think he did you're stupid 
it's like after he said the hydro clocks the core the 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 hydro i can't friggin pronounce it because i have stupid mouth hydro clocks the chloroquine <laughs> Uh, uh, some people were like, hey, we, like, they were looking at, like, the back of their fucking, like, fish tank cleaner, and they were like, oh, this is in that, and they ate fish tank cleaner and died because I had hydrochloroquine in it, which, to be fair, is on them. That's, that's 100% on them. But the right. fact that, like, he just went, he's just flying off the handle, the slightest thing that he finds, he's just like, this is it, and it's like, dude, you just need to chill. Like, he just needs to be, like, we're looking into it. We're looking into it. We'll let you know. <laughs> and you instead, know, he's I'm just like, we have the answers. But he doesn't. <laughs> and that's why we're all going to die. I've got a buddy who, uh, <laughs> I've got a buddy who uh, uh, had sex with a woman and, and the condom broke. Fucking brag about out. it. So he, yeah, so what's he that like? and poured <laughs> uh, vodka on his dick I as do. if that were going to do anything. But hey, you know, he didn't end up with an STD. So I guess. Maybe it worked. Proud. Yeah. Who's to say? The world may <laughs> never know. Uh-oh. We lost the host. Uh-oh. Quick, hand gestures. Sorry. I had to uh, locate my bottle opener, and I didn't want to flash my piece to uh, the, the people at home. Oh, come oh, on. Oh, shit. If you you know what if you had just tucked it you'd have been fine. I yeah hey call back. <laughs> Look, I mean if people pay to watch the show, I I yeah some that's not my OnlyFans there, Bert. <laughs> my uh my Dollywood <laughs> my Dollywood Tennessee is, bottle opener voice. That is flat. wow. That is nice. Blast. I like that. Blast. <laughs> Man, did you Want go all the way to Dollywood for that? No. No, my mom and grandma and my dad. I don't know why I said it in that order. My family took a vacation without me because that's how that's how we <laughs> roll, babe. No, my <laughs> my parents and my 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 aunt and uncles um leave is like with, I wanted my, to go to Dollywood. I wanted to go to Dollywood. I know they were they were like they they all <laughs> went and uh hey man, I I got some good souvenirs from that trip. Like I, I'm not I'm not going to complain about not going. I got this I got a couple other good fridge magnets because I'm, I'm, I've got that old man energy. Like I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt. I was wearing flip down sunglasses earlier. I, I got the Hawaiian. Kenny Chesney playing on my Jimmy Buffett Pandora. Like I'm chilling, right? You look like so. a Magnum PIE. <laughs> hey, hey. Hello. Oh man. So naturally, I like refrigerator magnets. Um, and, and and my mom got me this to show you like the difference between my mom and my grandma at the stage of my life. My mom got me this. Actually, it might uh -huh. have been my aunt. Either my mom or my aunt got me this. My grandma got me a jar of old smoky apple pie moonshine. So nice. I was nice. like, oh, I was like, mom, I love you, but grandma I think grandma kind of, I think grandma won on that one. <laughs> grandma knows what's up. Grandma knows what's up. Have you had the pickles? I pickle. haven't. I've seen those though. I have not myself had them. I'm. I don't know if pickles and alcohol. I mean picklebacks. I've done picklebacks, so I guess it's not that weird. But it feels weird. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like it feels weird for pickles to be present themselves. Like somebody would be like, "Man, you're wasted. How'd you get drunk? I had a pickle. <laughs> pickle. It's like normally oh, you eat the pickle uh, after you get drunk. Am I right, ladies and homosexual men? <laughs> and guys that are just a little too close with their friends. I'm not gonna judge. Speaking of all well, the friends, friends, <laughs> um, my my uh, my better half powered through the entire uh, what two or three seasons of Queer Eye on on Netflix. So I yeah, of course. So that's what else? What else do you do it during what quarantine? Else? Watch fucking and I came into one episode where this guy was making what he called redneck margaritas. Which were literally mm. just ice cubes, tequila, and Mountain Dew. I'm kind of tempted cubes, to try it as a as a as a. a uh, that, but I'm instead of try, regular Mountain Dew, you use as Baja a, Blast. As a challenge. You know what oh, I, mean? I like I like that. I like that Baja Blast. Yeah, that, but Baja Blast instead of regular Mountain Dew. Because here's the thing: 
they all he hated it, but he something. loved it. And I'm thinking, I don't know. Like, I mean, I've had um, Jack Daniels and, and Mountain Dew, and that was that was actually really good. Yeah. Okay. So what's that? Is there a name for that drink? Yeah, I was just trying to think about it. I could, I can't remember the name, but yes. Jack Dew. Jag off juice. A jag, jag, a jag off. Oh. Well, we made yeah, that that Terry Crews where it was what it was like vodka triple sec and Gatorade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, the episode that can't be released. Oh, the after dark episode. Yeah, I think uh, I think there's some. Yeah, we left a lot on the cutting room floor. To that. be fair, <laughs> the the episode, the first episode that I cut yeah. with these guys, the first episode of Theft Mart that I guest starred on, we we kept going after that episode ended, and there's a lot that we can't release. I guess I let's put it this way: I don't remember an entirely whole lot of that conversation. <laughs> uh, Still in the vault. <laughs> So See, one time, one day in like five or ten years, we just need to release it all. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll put it in my will. That way, if I have an untimely demise, you you have to release it. <laughs> yeah. You have to play it at my it. funeral. <laughs> it's probably not as good as you remember it. It's <laughs> yeah, well, it's I don't like, remember it, so that's the problem. Yeah. I remember well, it's it's, it's probably <laughs> not audible because I laugh really, really obnoxiously loudly when I'm sober. And it just gets worse when I'm drunk. So I imagine it's probably just a lot of me turning into like Mrs. Foreman from that '70s show because that's what my laughter is. <laughs> point. Nice. Ooh, that '70s show. No, I have no desire to watch rewatch that. Never mind. Eric, uh, what was Eric's sister's name? The the actress. Oh, she Lori. Liked... Lori. She, yeah, she is uh, very much not alive. The deep end. She's yeah. dead. She, she died. Did. Yeah. Oh, she did. Yeah, she got heavily involved in drugs. And, she took know, the 70s theme a little too seriously. Yeah. Which sucks, man, because she was actually, like, really good in that role. Like, the, the actor yeah. they replaced her with just was not as good. Like, she just was tame compared to the other Lori. Like, she didn't have that bite. That yeah, she didn't, I was going to say, she didn't have that venom that Lori had. When she, when she made a quip, man... That fucking stung the soul. Well, because, like, replacement Lori, the only real storyline they gave her is, like, she starts shacking up with Fez at a certain point. It's just like, okay, I guess. And then Tony yeah, Grace is yeah, like, yeah. I'm gonna leave the show to go make Spider-Man 3. Here's Seth fucking Myers' brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's the final what's season a, of the show. What's Eric Foreman? What's the actor's name? In Topher life? Grace. Topher Grace. Topher Grace. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Joker Grace. He's really not a bad actor. Like, he he tried. He tried as Eddie Brock. He tried. They just didn't, they didn't a, let him fucking stretch his leg. He was in, is it called Sex, Death, and Robots? Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was that? also, yeah. 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 A good one. <clears throat> he was in an episode of Black Mirror. Can we also talk about how pretentious yeah. it is to go by Topher and not Chris? He actually explained that on an episode of Afternoons on Nickelodeon with Stick Stickley. I remember because might, I was you, I was in the demographic might, for that. You might be blown away right now. I never put together that Topher was the Christopher. <laughs> like, well, because like he you, just, you blew my mind with that. I don't. I, my mind's blown that I remember where I learned this fucking fact from on a random Nickelodeon interview show between episodes of Rocket Power. <laughs> Marshall, yeah. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why I know that because I knew a guy who was his his parents legally named him Topher because they did not like Christopher, <laughs> so they 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 named him Topher. Well, see, that's what a lot so, of it was because he said like. He wanted to go by Christopher. He said all growing up, like, his parents named him Christopher, and he was like, I didn't really like the idea of Chris, so people would be like, you know, he, he'd be like, I know, I'm, I'm, he, he would introduce himself, he'd be like, hi, I'm Christopher, and they would be like, oh, hey, Chris, and he was like, and I would correct them by going, Topher, like, Topher, because <laughs> I wanted them to say Christopher, and he was like, and then after a while, people thought I wanted to go by Topher, and then it just stuck, Topher Grays. That's kind of a lame story, but <laughs> you know what? I mean, when you're, on, wait, wait, wait. let's I, put it this I, way. Hear me out. 
I just had an epiphany real quick. Chris is to Christopher as Sofer is to Christopher, as John is to Jonathan, as Nathan is to Jonathan. Yeah. Huh? But Nathan's also well, never... Nathaniel, so now we need uh, somebody's oh, kid to go yeah. by Eel. <laughs> So like, oh, it's short for Nathaniel. So where do you get <laughs> Dick from Richard from? If you ask him nicely. <laughs> Set up and knock down. <laughs> Look at that. We should have a we should have a duo stand up. We should have a podcast. <laughs> hey, that's a good idea. Right? We should do that Let's sometime. Do it. Let's do it. We just drink and make up stupid jokes. <laughs> That's literally how I sell this to people when they're like, when they want to be on it, and they're like, so do you have any talking points? And I'm like, oh, hon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like we started off, I... the, the last episode we did, um, if you're watching this right now, it'll be uh, in the, uh, it, the, we'll have a, a card uh, uh, somewhere. It always flips it, so I never know where to point. We'll have a card up top um, with a link to that, potentially. If not, it'll be a link at the end of the video. Can I'm, we still do the how to, thing? I'm still learning how to do things on YouTube. And uh, <laughs> so we'll have a link to that. But last episode, <laughs> yeah. we had Kat Scott, John and Shanine Delph, and Alexandria Morin, where we started off the show by you. talking about uh, uh, the impending demise of one Kim Jong-un, potentially. Oh, do we? Yeah, do we North know Korea, what, what the status Korea. is? We don't. That's what's weird is people are like, hey, he's probably going to die. And other people are like, he's good. Don't even worry about it. South Korea's official statement is he's he's good. Yeah, I figure he's good. I figure these the guys like that, they make deals. Yeah, dude. Well, is that South Korea's sister statement or North Korea's statement? That's South Korea's statement. South Korea. South Korea's statement uh. is we haven't seen anything out of the ordinary from what North Korea normally does. Interesting. But they've been bringing in Kim Jong Un's sister a lot more lately. They had originally like been like, "No, fuck off, we don't like you." But then they were like, mm -hmm. "Hey, he just had surgery, and there were complications. Can you come back?" And I think yeah, she well, might she, be making like a Cersei Lannister like play for the throne on that shit. Yeah, she's next in line. Yeah, which right. is because he's never. And that was the thing about his wife. His wife has not mm. produced a male heir, heir if yeah. I remember correctly. Or an heir at all, and so the the, I think for a while she got sent away. Yeah, could you I imagine a freaking dude? Could you imagine <laughs> the most progressive thing we get out of twenty twenty is that a woman becomes a dictator of North Korea before America has a female president. <laughs> before America has a female president, <laughs> <laughs> or or Kim Jong Un's wife produces an heir. And the kid does not look like him at all. Oh, it looks like dude. Dennis Rodman. Like the kid looks like Dennis Rodman. I was just about to say that. Pink hair and all, like. Yeah, <laughs> comes out no. Oh. It's just how Dennis amazing, Rodman. How in amazing! How amazing! wedding story. Dream. I listen. I just got a great idea for a movie. I would watch it. Okay. Kim Jong Un passes away, and instead of his sister. He installs Dennis Rodman to be the dictator, and his basically the whole movie surrounds him battling Kim Jong Un's uh, sister for ultimate supremacy of leadership in North Korea. I'll take it one step further. Do so it. Dennis Dennis Rodman, you know, he becomes the new heir. Kim Jong Kim Jong Un dies. Dennis Rodman is the dictator. The uh, um, what is the the government system for South Korea? Whatever their like prime minister, president. Yeah. He president. has a he has a basketball team that he puts together, <laughs> and then Dennis Rodman has to reunite the '90s Bulls <laughs> to be South Korea, and it's all about a struggle about getting the team back together. And everybody okay. learns something. <laughs> I love the idea, but can we can we take it one step further? Before, oh, yeah. before Kim Jong-un passes away, he legally, under North Korean laws, adopts Dennis Rodman as his heir. And Dennis, that's how Dennis Rodman becomes a dictator. <laughs> and in, within that storyline of reuniting the, the 90s Bulls, because who's not watching The Last Dance, 
he ends up falling right. in love with Kim Jong Un's sister. I so like the, it. I like it. I like there's it. The, there's the romantic love interest in it. Can I take oh, it a yeah. step further? Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> Please. The team he enlists, he can only get a few of the Chicago Bulls. He can't get them all. He gets Scottie Pippen. He gets, you know, he gets a few others. He can't quite reach Mike, right? He's trying to get Michael Jordan. Can't quite reach him. And then they realize the they're like two or three more players short. So Michael shows up like like frigging Avengers style, gets off the plane. He's got Bugs, Bonnie, and Daffy Duck with him. Yes. It's the base jam too. <laughs> And a space oh, jam too. <laughs> Listen, Marshall, you need to use your connections to Hollywood. Yeah, you need to make right? this happen. As soon as they Let's listen to this it. podcast, if you put that on the podcast network, they're gonna listen to this and go, Oh, we gotta book Holy these guys. Shit. You know who we should contact? We should contact Seth Rogan. Oh yeah. He has no production company and he's just crazy enough to try and make this work. <laughs> Be like, <laughs> it's going to be the interview too. <laughs> the way I see it, we could either we could either get Seth Rogen off this idea, or the fact that I have a podcast, we might be able to get in touch with Kev Smith. There you go. That's awesome. my goal with this: I is that. I want to get big enough as a podcast that I can be on Kev Smith's podcast and just like oh, I don't even yeah. smoke weed. Like I still wouldn't with I might with Kev Smith, but I would just be like, hey man. Can I be in Mallrats too? Like, and then <laughs> yeah, you know, this is, I, I, I me doing this show. podcast is all just a long con to get into Mallrats too. <laughs> I watched this uh, show called Ugly Delicious on Netflix, and there's an episode with Seth Rogen, which is kind of weird, but um, but basically he just talks about like so they just get high on the show and they eat a bunch of foods in Vancouver, mm -hmm. but it's amazing because. He has this whole like dynamic with regards to his smoking where he's yeah. just like, he's like, man, he's like Snoop Dogg's the only other guy that I can smoke with that we can be on the same level. But when I smoke with someone, I always tell them, you know, one hit and that's it because you're going to get really, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's oh, yeah. got this like really weird Zen kind of way of approaching smoking with people, <laughs> which I just absolutely I fucking love. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> Seth Rogen. All right. Boys, we've been going for about an hour. Wow. Not quite. About an hour. I'm about to crack open another Colden. And uh, let's take a five-minute break. Let's uh, stretch yeah. out. Sounds good. I'm Are we going to do the tuck dance? I'm going to take, <laughs> take a little potty. <laughs> and we'll be right back. All right. Cool. All right, I'm going to go pee now and grab another beer. Oh. I'm writing notes to myself now. What? Uh, I'm oh, sorry. I'm writing notes to myself <laughs> now. I'm making my my editing job easier. I finally learned <laughs> that uh, oh, I want to yeah. know where to cut like the breaks and things, but I don't want to have to watch the entirety of the podcast, which is what I've been doing. Yeah. And we had one a couple weeks ago that literally went two hours and forty five minutes. I called oh, it the crap. big chungus episode. Because normally these go like hour and a half. You I know, saw that hour, one. Yeah, hour and 45. I didn't see it all, but... 
Um, what do you so use to edit currently? Windows Movie Maker, because I'm a broke bitch. Hey, it works. Gets the job. It done. does work. It does get the job done. And honestly, the final product, like, it, it still it looks good. So I'm I'm not like offended by that at all. Um, yeah. I wish I had better software, but I don't want to like if I can use that for free and get those results. Like I was talking to a friend who was like, "Dude, don't even pay the fucking fifteen dollars a month just because if you don't if you do the free version of Zoom for any calls of three people or more, it limits you to forty uh -huh. minutes." So, like, oh, if, yeah. if, if I hadn't paid for the premium, we would have done 40 minutes, and I would have had to end the call and then restart the call. Whereas paying the $15, I can stream live to Facebook if I want to, or at the very wow. least, oh, wow. we get unlimited recording time. And I can do, like, cloud storage and shit. It makes everything a lot easier. Have you heard about this, uh, have you heard about this entertainment drop-off theory? No. Entertainment dropout theory? Yeah. So I was reading something today mm -hmm. that basically said that there's not enough content because, you know, they've stopped production on, like, TV shows and films and, and, and whatnot because yeah. of the whole coronavirus. Yeah. That basically there's not enough content to go another few months without, like uh, – like, they haven't finished enough of, like, various TV shows and movies and whatnot to produce anything uh, new within, like, three three to six wow. months or something like that. It uh, it affected The Walking Dead. They couldn't have, yeah. they had to delay some of the episodes because, like, post-production oh, no. wasn't, wasn't done. What are we going to do without The Walking Dead? <laughs> oh, gee. Because I, I showed it fucking it. die, like, five seasons ago it. already. <laughs> yeah, true, true. <laughs> I still, I still watch it. That watch show it, is The I Walking Dead. Kind of <laughs> you know what? And the whole thing is, yeah, movies and TV shows, there is an entertainment drop-off. You know where there's not an entertainment drop-off? YouTube.com slash Marvin Comedy. We have a yeah. uh, yeah. show, Comedians in Quarantine Getting Crunk slash Quarantine in Between. Now Marvin's Room. See all that? We, uh, we got local Terre Haute talent and, and, and Bloomington as well. So if you want some good Midwestern and, humor, and which I, if you want Midwestern humor, which I promise you exists, that isn't just, oh, yeah, hey, Midwesterners are so nice. Like, here's the thing. Mini rant. There's this guy. I don't know his <laughs> name. Rant. I don't know his name. He's a comedian of some sort. I say comedian because I don't know if he does stand-up. I don't. He might just be like a sketch guy. He's gotten, like, low-key YouTube famous because he's like – makes videos he's like oh here's how midwesterners be but all of his videos are very much like you listen to him talk and you see how he acts and it's very much like wisconsin minnesota michigan type shit so like north midwest and he's like oh yeah jerry i'm gonna mow your lawn for you oh does your mom need a need a trip to the airport eh? like that kind of stuff and i'm like ain't nobody like that where i'm from i'm from Terre Haute, indiana and if you so much as look at me the wrong way i'm ready to cuss your ass out you're gonna Get smile the at them because Don't that's what help. people do like, keep it moving, fuckhead. I got shit to do. Like, uh, what is it? Are we weird? Is Terre Haute just weird? Or does everybody just have a weird view of the Midwest that I'm not aware of? Well, here's the thing. Well, we, we live in Antarctica. Because you guys are in Antarctica. So what's your what's your, <laughs> yeah. what's your, what's your take yeah. on, on where I'm from? Oh, well, people can't yeah, see Marshall. And people don't way. immediately know who Marshall is just by looking here's at him. Like, yeah. understand. <laughs> In in terms of, of, of tax purposes, the federal government considers basically North Dakota all the way down to about Kansas or so, the Midwest. And so, like, normal people, like from, for us in Antarctica, we would never consider North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin as Midwest. No, it's right? South Canada. Right, exactly. Or it's 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 you know north of the wall, yeah. Uh, so, but they consider themselves Midwesterners, and I just laugh because I'm like, ha, 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 ha. I don't consider you Midwesterners. Yeah. Nobody in the actual <laughs> Midwestern states consider you Midwesterners. For me, like Midwest, for me is like Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, Missouri, like, and and I guess Michigan. We'll count Michigan. Like, Maybe, it comes I mean, how do you feel about Iowa? It's Iowa, of, it's, Iowa, I feel like it's mid, they have enough corn. They're Midwest enough. 
I feel yeah. like they're Midwest. They're yeah. Midwest. Yeah. If you're basically if you're in the Central Time Zone or your Central Time Zone adjacent, Midwest. Sure, I'll take that. <laughs> Midwest. <laughs> and that includes that includes places like Wisconsin, Minnesota, and North Dakota. But you got to be south of those places. Like we're right. in a little microphone. If your if your so agricultural you, you economy is places? mostly corn and SoundCloud rappers. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I like the SoundCloud rapper bit. That was good. Thank you. The other day, I got an advertisement on Facebook for these SoundCloud rappers. That and then like they all did like a bar. It was like six of them. Oh yeah. They all did a verse, and like number four in the verse was like very like pro white supremacy. <laughs> I was, like, what the I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, how? Like, it felt like they just like stuck it in with all everything else. Yeah, it was horrible. That's uncomfortable. Trash. I wanted to yeah. do, like, a Terre Haute comedy cipher. Like, a, a bunch of us comedians do, <laughs> uh, 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 like, do a couple bars or we all do a verse. I feel like, like, none of us think that way. But I feel like it would have that same energy at a certain point. Like, one of us would be like... <laughs> And I'm not going to say who, <laughs> one of us in the Terre Haute comedy team would be like, I'm not even going to rap. Here's the thing about Israel. <laughs> <laughs> and it's certainly not me, thankfully. Gonna, I can, I'm, I'm going to be the guy at the top who's be like, it's Cram John Jenkins, what's popping? <laughs> well, AKA pull, uh, the young Jared Bartlett, AKA quick. the fourth Beastie Boy, AKA your boy Levi, AKA... AKA. The young Danny DeVito. They're gonna pull a fourth. They're gonna pull a drunk Rick. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. I love that episode. That I love episode. that episode. <laughs> What's this Israel? Oh, it's something that Rick talks Israel. about when he gets drunk. <laughs> Good lord. So, so what do you all miss uh, about life in quarantine, or <laughs> or? Life before quarantine. The bitches. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was just about. To, I was about to be like strip clubs. Um, <laughs> no, man. I uh, I mostly. I I had the realization I haven't done legitimate stand up comedy in well over a month. I don't like Ooh. that. <laughs> like, cause we, we can't go out. Bars are closed. There's no other like venues or events. We've had two shows that were canceled. We were supposed to do one at uh, Tolly's Bar and Grill in Terre Haute. Um, and then we were supposed to do one for Record Store Day at the Terre Haute Brewing Company. And uh, everything got canceled, obviously. Um, Is Tolly's going to survive? I think so. They're they're technically closed right now, but, like, they've been opening here and there. Like, they did a – that's actually where I got my, my drinks that I'm drinking tonight. They did nice. $1 domestic bottles and $2 craft bottles, imports, and ciders. Um, just a week ago as of no this shit. going up, so last Saturday. Um, and I went and, and, and stocked up. So they've been doing that kind of. But yeah, they've been kind of like staying closed just because various reasons, economic, health concerns with the virus and, and everything. Sure. So they're they're playing it safe. Um, I, I honestly think they'll be okay, especially once they get started up again whenever that happens. You know, we already planned on having a big comedy show, a karaoke, blowout, bash. Um, we're going to have about four birthdays to make up for and, and all kinds of stuff. So I, we just oh, need yeah. all this to end and we need people to get <clears throat> shit together. Stop fucking protesting out like an idiot and just like leave it to Americans to protest something that says, hey, stay home. Right. Like, I get it. People have to work. I do. I do understand that. And I know it's it's a very privileged thing for me to say as somebody who gets to work from home. However, as a lot of people have been sharing online with the 1918 Spanish flu, you know, World War One's at the end. People thought it was over. They went out, bringing raids, parties, what have you. And then a second wave hit and ended up killing more people than the first wave did. Like, if there's one thing I could say is just, like, just be careful. Don't be a fucking moron. Don't be an idiot. You don't need to get your freaking hair done. Just wear a do-rag like Marshall. 
honestly. <laughs> you know, and and I oh, love yeah. the whole thing where people are like, using the term Karen is that's sexist. And, uh, no, it's not. It's literally not. It's called you're being called out on how obnoxious and prissy you are. Get your right. fucking shit together. <laughs> Primity. I'll tell you what, the coolest That's thing that a I real think, talk minute from Levi. What do, what do you uh what do you miss, Berg? <laughs> Sorry, I, I Grandpa <laughs> Levi had to go on a little bit of a little bit of a tangent there. You know, <laughs> uh, honestly, the the only thing that I miss, I, I don't you know, I, I the only thing that I miss is literally just being able to hang out with people. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's it. Like and not even just anyone. Like I just want to go and hang out with my buddies, drink beer, smoke cigars, and oh, have a good time. You know. And I know, like a couple. I've had a couple of like Zoom, you know, hangouts and stuff. Yeah. Let's be honest. It's not as good as the real thing. It's, it's not it's as not good the as the real thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's 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 like it's like watching a, a cam girl as opposed to you know going and getting a lap dance. You know. It's, yeah. It's like wearing a rubber, you know? It's like, yeah, I'm going to give her a dollar. <laughs> that was good. Sure. That's as good as a real thing. I'm so glad my, my parents don't watch these. I, I said that last week, too, and I feel like somebody's eventually just going to start sending. Like, this will be the week my mom listens to it, and she just goes, <laughs> sure, why not? Like, she's at that point now. She's just like, he's going to do what he's going to do. Like, yeah, I didn't know I get that. Like, strip clubs, uh, I raised you better. So, shout out to, we have she a tried, anyway. member of Seth Mark. And uh, that's uh, E Money. Shout out to E Money. E well, I still Money, have, I don't want to. Well, I still have I never I had a wanna, chance to meet or do a podcast with, by the way. Yeah, oh. yeah. E Money is great. I don't want to. I don't want to bust him out on anything. Um, but he he was believed to have the Rona, and uh, did, did they? He called into a nurse line, and they told him to self quarantine. And uh, last I heard, he's uh, excuse me. It sounds like he's pulling through and he's going to be healthy and Good deal. like that. He had a, Good. Yeah, he had a temperature for a while, but so uh, so yeah. shout out to Eat Money. We we hope you're doing well, brother, and we hope yeah, you're doing good. We out. can't wait to yeah, get man. back to the podcast, man. Yeah, hope to be able to actually yeah. do a podcast with you with you soon, Absolutely. man. I've, I've listened yeah. to your guys. Honestly, he seems really really chill. Honestly, that's the biggest thing that I miss is being able to podcast in the same room with yeah. the boys. Yeah, but yeah, because your your podcast setup is way better than what this is going to end up sounding like. Which this isn't going to be <laughs> no, bad, no. but it it doesn't beat having a switchboard and actual microphone. Oh, it, it, it's well, all about it's, content. All yeah. about content. Right. Quality yeah. doesn't matter. And you know what? And, and Berg, man, I've never smoked a cigar before, but when this is all over, I'm gonna smoke a cigar with you, my guy. Fuck um, yeah, let's make do it. That yeah. <laughs> So I, I I don't know how you I don't know what you guys your experience has been but um I've known I I know of a couple people who who've had the Rona um but one of my one of my uh, a dear friend of mine um uh, who lives who lives in New York City she she was at home she was quarantining herself somehow got it and in one weekend was on, in the ICU on a ventilator oh wow and, and 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 got out the next weekend and i'll tell you what man that that was when it really became real for me because oh yeah not that it not that it wasn't real before that but to know home. somebody yeah. yeah but to know somebody who 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 not only had it but but i mean almost died and it's weird because i mean she was a very happy go lucky person beforehand mm -hmm. but you know, now this she's like She's like, look, you know, life is a gift. If you guys oh, yeah. want to talk about this experience, you know, she's like, I'm all for talking about it. Uh, and it's just, it's wild to to see. Like, I mean, she she realizes how close to death she came, and 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 to me, that's when again, not that I didn't take it serious before, but it was just one of those things where it's like, okay, well, this sucks, but this is what we have to do. Yeah. And then after that, it was like, no, we we should probably take this. We should, we should probably, I mean, we were already social distancing. We were already self-quarantining, but then it was like, okay, let's get masked. Let's like, let's be safe about this. Cause yeah. Yeah, no, I, I had very much the fucking... same experience. Like it, like I, I've been working from home for, for about a month, a little over a month. Um, it was, it was March 20th. We started our work from home period where I work and, um, 
it was one of those where it was real and it was serious, but it it, it had it didn't have that changeability. Yeah, because it, it was like, it was something that it felt like was happening was, to other it was, people. It was happening somewhere else. Yeah, it's yeah. like Ebola. Like times? like Ebola was a thing. Exactly. Three people got Ebola in the U.S. So it was mostly it was a it was an over there thing. Right, and but to, to then me, like yeah. my my best friend's aunt passed away from it, and just really just like. Like, it's tragic when anybody dies from anything, but when it's one of those, it, it hits you in the gut a little more. When it's like, oh, oh, God, oh, mm, yeah, this is, it is here. And it, like, one of my friends works works in a pharmacy, and she had, like, a few patients who got it. She had a coworker who was, like, believed to have it. She had to self-quarantine for, like, a week. Man. And it was, I mean, it's just, it's, it's. The fact that people still Crazy. think it's some kind of government conspiracy with 5G cell towers is nuts to me. <laughs> like, it's the most, like, insane. Only in America. Just, like, it's, it's, and it, it really, not to be like, oh, check your privilege, Tumblr. Ugh. It really is kind <laughs> of like a little bit of a privileged thing because we've had the good graces to grow up in a country that doesn't have to deal with disease as much. Right. Compared yeah, to some yeah. of these other countries that, you know, like, like countries that have to deal with malaria. And, and what, like, the mumps only came back a few years ago because of these frigging, like, anti-vaxxers. <laughs> yeah. Like, otherwise, we had eradicated the mumps. Something that you read about, like, you think of the mumps, you think of, like, colonial children, or, like, kids in, like, the 40s and 50s or whatever. Where it's like, oh, oh little, little Johnny's got the mumps, I better hide him outside in the water <laughs> closet. Like, right. I'm going to put on some Buddy Holly and just uh, go to the malt shop while he <laughs> has a mumps party with the other kids so they all get mumps so they can build up the resistance. The actual thing, measles and chicken pox parties existed back in the day. Yeah, they did. Chicken pox now we have, parties. Now we've gone full circle and we have corona parties. Woo-woo. If we've we? gone full circle. I hope not. Oh, oh that, no, man, they exist. People you... were like, oh, we're having a party. And then they all ended up getting sick. One of my wow. favorite stories was I, I read about was this um, – when this was all getting started, this uh, this kid went down to South Padre for a spring break, and his dad told him not to, and he went down anyway. And him and his buddies went down there, you know, party for spring break. Oh, yeah. Came back. They all they all had it, and his, his – the dad go the dad was like, nope, and made him fucking sleep out in a tent. I would, too. The, in the backyard wow. for two fucking <laughs> weeks and made him fucking rough it because he's like because because i guess his his the the grandparents were living with them and everything mm -hmm. and he's like nope you're not coming into this house and basically set up this system where you know it was like basically three hot meals and a cot and that was it he fucking stayed in his tent <laughs> all day long yeah, and man. they would bring out his food and then walk out back into the house and he'd grab his food and he's just like but you know what <laughs> Given the fact that we've just surpassed fifty thousand deaths in this country, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. that's the thing. I mean, that's the thing. People go, you know, I've, I've seen people say, "Oh, well, you know, it's just you know, people die all every day." And it's like not as bad uh, as the flu, right? I I understand that people die, but like, <laughs> it's like we already we already have all these deaths from the flu. You want to add fifty thousand more, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, right. Although I'll so, tell you this. So I'll what tell do you this. think? Go ahead. What do you think about the uh, conspiracy theory that this came out of the, the Wuhan lab? Oh, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard it's, it's 5G cell towers. Oh, <laughs> yeah. you know, here's the thing. Well, it, it, even if it's true. for wanting faster connections, right? Like, I'm just, <laughs> I can't what's stream my two girls one cup without a fucking global pandemic. What's funny about the 5G thing is that 5G – the, what the cell service is going to be, it's on the same radio waves as citizen band radio, so CB radio. So we've been exposed to it for years. So it's just hilarious to me that people are freaking out about it. Are you telling me that like, fucking Convoy song from the 70s gave me coronavirus? Yes. <laughs> yes. The breaker 1-9, breaker 1-9, exactly. this is COVID-19, come on back, COVID big daddy. <laughs> You know, here's here's the thing, Levi, about that that whole Wuhan, um, yeah. uh, 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 laboratory Wuhan, Wuhan. conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I might be I might be apt to dismiss it, except I remember in like two thousand and maybe it was two thousand four, two thousand five, somewhere in the mid two thousands, 
Yeah. There was a 60s minute, there was a 60 minute um, news story about a, a Palestinian lab that was trying to create a virus that only targeted people from Israel. So <laughs> it's one of those things I'm where. Sorry. I don't mean to laugh at that. It's bad. <laughs> no, no. It's one of those things it's where ridiculous. it's like. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, okay, maybe it did originate in that. I mean, it, I, it's certainly plausible, right? It's certainly, it's certainly a, a plausible idea. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't yeah. negate the fact of the seriousness of what's going on and, and what everything, you know, how, how it's impacting everything. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. What about, uh, have you heard about that? The rogue Harvard uh, chemist or biologist that was paid money to go to that Wuhan lab and here's the thing let me just say something about that Harvard is not higher education okay I oh shit let me me listen listen hot take hot take from Bert it's 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 no different than this whole this whole admission scandal right people go oh yeah oh look at look at rich people buying their way into and it's like look Ivy League, yes, they are universities, but they're not the sa- they're not the same level as, say, Antarctica Univer- uh, State University or these these oh, regional no. Midwest contra you know comprehensive you know it's like I'm like yeah. I'm tired of 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 people lumping it all together. Like, listen, Ivy Tech is not in the same level of, as Harvard. Don't fucking group us together, right? all right? Yeah. So who's I'm I, I apologize in all sincerity. Who's who's grouping that together though? Like collegiately, is that what you're saying? Or no, I'm saying I'm saying um, the general public. I'm saying people general from public, a, certain, yeah. a certain political persuasion sort of lumps all of higher education together, and it's like, no, we're not all the same because there are people that are you know there there are universities that are struggling. We're not you know we don't have it's like this. I mean. You you guys n- might not <laughs> be aware of some of these things, but like like for example, Stanford came out last week or this past week and good said, for them. "Yeah, good for them." They <laughs> that closet. Hello. <laughs> they came out and they made this big deal about you know what we're not going to take any money for from the high you know federal government you know because we have oh, an endowment. Okay. And blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And it's like yeah. yeah, you shouldn't take money because you have an endowment that's in the billions. Like that money is it's it's the same thing as this whole small business uh, scandal. Oh yeah, you know Shake Shack and and Potbelly taking money as a quote unquote small business. Uh, uh, Ruth and Chris in Indianapolis gave their yeah. money back. They were like, because people right. gave them shit, and they're just like, they're second like, oh, time I had got- ever heard of Bruce Chris. By the way, the first time was talking to one of my oh, friends who, who was listen, talking about Ruth, hanging Ruth, out there. Listen, Ruth Chris is besides the shitty name. It's it's a good steakhouse. I mean, if you want to drop <laughs> yeah. that kind of money for steak, it's not bad. But that's what I'm saying is that you can't you can't lump people. You know, you can't lump these organizations together yeah. because Harvard is not like you know uh, 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 an Antarctica State University. Oh yeah. <laughs> woo, woo. So guys, anybody watch friggin' you guys watch Tiger King? Hell yeah. Um, what do you, no. what you guys think of the Tiger King? Um, okay, so here's what I did. I watched the first three three episodes. Basically, I watched the episode with uh, Carol Baskins and the uh, and and her whole storyline. Yeah. And then I and then I read an article <laughs> that basically told me what what the whole thing was about. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't watch any more of it. But it's it's a crazy story that I I can totally see because it's fucking America. Oh yeah, you know. It's you and me. me. What's crazy America. to me is the, the people that are home of free, <laughs> little pink houses for you and me. There are people that actually, there are people that are actually petitioning the president to fucking release the tiger. Oh team. yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and Joe so the, the only, yeah. to me, the Surprise only Trump remarkable him, story, like, head of like the Department of the, the Interior, <laughs> like the only two remarkable <laughs> stories from that is one. I'm def- I'm 100% committed to the idea that Carol Baskin killed her first husband. Oh, 100%. And two, what kind of dedication do you have to have to get your fucking arm ripped off 
and then go back to work a week later. Honestly, yeah. I, I, true, that I don't true. understand. Yeah, yeah. That, that was really, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Still not the most messed up thing I saw on Netflix. <laughs> Which, what, what was that? What's the most messed up thing you've seen on Netflix? Y'all ever heard of a little anime called Beastars? No. <laughs> it's like a, it, but not it's seen. like a more fucked up, hornier Zootopia. And Alexandra what? Morin would vehemently disagree because she's disagreed twice on this podcast now about that. It's about <laughs> this wolf who goes to a high school. It's, it's like Zootopia rules. They're all anthropomorphic animals. And this wolf like like the predators are trying to like they're always like their big thing is they're not allowed to eat meat or anything because they have to like repress their urges it's a lot of that like the characters have these traits where it, they take the traits of the animal and they anthropomorphize it so okay. like the main like heroine is a bunny and she you know has a tragic backstory basically leads to her being promiscuous. So it's like, okay, she's a bunny, obviously she's gonna fuck. <laughs> and it's it's one of those. And it's it's it it's like, oh the wolf is, you know, he's he's a lone wolf. He's got friends, but he kinda doesn't really feel like he belongs and but he's a good guy. Um there's a deer in it who's the head of the drama club and he shoots somebody he shoots a, a mobster. Because we all know deer be packing. <laughs> um, true, true. You know what? True. It's actually kind of it, it really like it. It kept me going. It kept because I was like, I didn't have as many times where I outwardly said "What the fuck?" like I did during <laughs> Tiger King. But it was weird enough that I was like, "This is weird." But it was riveting enough that I was like, "I want to keep watching this." That's interesting. I've been honestly the only thing that I've really been watching during this whole quarantine is Community. And I love I, community up until a point, and then it just jumped the shark so hard, I just couldn't watch it. You know what yeah, point? So, you know what point so, I think that was? You know what point I bet that was? Season when, four, uh, when season four is left. Dan Harmon got fired. Yeah, so yeah. so we're on there season, season four. We're on season three right now, the and I've, everything I've read is that if you just watch the first three seasons, just you can stop there and you're done. Because yeah. seasons four, five, and six <laughs> just go off the rails. But it, yeah. I can't get over how smart and how funny and just mm-hmm. how good it is. The, here's, the, here's how it works. Seasons one, two, and three, fan, yeah, literally the finale of season three, like, they, they honestly thought the show was going to get canceled after season three. So the, the season three finale honestly works as a series finale for Community. Good. And then Harmon got drunk at the uh, – because they talk <laughs> about it on the commentary. Harmon, Dan Harmon – got drunk at the season three rap party goes up to the stage grabs the mic and just like i want to make an announcement fuck chevy fuck chevy and leads everybody in this giant rant just yelling fuck chevy because everybody hated chevy <laughs> chase uh, as i'm sure we all know chevy chase giant piece of shit right. i love fletch i love caddyshack but apparently chevy chase is like the worst person on the planet to work with <laughs> no but honestly the which first, makes so sense because you hear those stories from caddyshack Pierce Hawthorne is the fucking worst character in all of television. Like, he's, he's just he's, terrible. He's just Chevy. And that's the thing. Right. Is Chevy was like, I don't know why they wrote my character like this. Like, I don't, I don't get the humor behind my character. And Dan Harmon literally was like, we just wrote him to be Chevy Chase. Like, right. <laughs> it, I'm just, just like, Chevy. yeah. I, so I, I've, been, I've been loving it. Um, I, I think personally, I, you know, I'm glad. I'm glad I didn't watch it while it was going on because mm-hmm. – yeah, I think it would have been too weird. It would have been too like I'd have been like, ah, uh, I'm not really, I'm not really into this. But you know, being able to watch multiple episodes back to back, it's like, okay, like, like I'll be honest with you, the whole Abed Christmas where they become claymation. Yeah, I I watched <laughs> half of that. I'm like, okay, let's skip through this one because it was just too oh, fucking dude, weird. I love that. I guess really? I just I really like that weird <laughs> shit though. Well, because like Community, the first season of Community came out when I was about to graduate from high school. So I was okay. kind of going into college when Community was, like, at its start. So I, I watched it while I was in college. So it was very much like my college show. Um, and then, yeah, and then Harmon leaves, and then season four is dog shit. Because they're like, it's, oh, yeah. it's just, I don't want to spoil Reno for you there. No, I've already, I've already <laughs> read about it, so go ahead. 
season four, they're just like, hey, what if Troy and Britta dated? Because those are two characters that are definitely going to date. That makes sense. Well, but they kind <laughs> of set like, it up in season three. And they do. Yeah. But uh, they don't yeah. execute it all that well. And you can tell the production right. value drops dramatically. Like, they stop funding the fucking show in season four. Like, they just do. <laughs> and then season five, they bring back Dan Harmon. But then at that point, NBC cancels it. Season six, it gets picked up by Yahoo for their Yahoo screen service, which lasted as long as um, Community season six. Because after Community season six was over and the show ended, nobody gave a shit about Yahoo screen anymore. Like, literally, right. people watched it for Community. And then when Community ended, well, and also Yahoo got bought <laughs> out by Verizon, I think. Right. And then also Dan Harmon put you know, put his energy back into season five, but he got about, like, I think halfway through season five, and then that's when little fucking Justin Roiland comes up and goes, hey, Dan, I just got a fucking show from Adult Swim. So, because he actually talks about how, like, he was working on Community season five, and he was, like, literally, he would film an episode of Community, and then he and Roiland would stay in the writer's room for Community on the NBC lot. He was like, we'd get done doing community and then Roiland would come over and we'd stay in the writer's room on the NBC lot till like four o'clock in the morning writing Rick and Morty. Cause they were like writing season one of Rick and Morty while they were making season five of community. Well, and you can, wow. you can totally, especially in the first three seasons, you can totally see a lot of elements from Rick and Morty yeah. in, in, in the first three seasons. It has the big Harmon energy. Yeah. And I, and I, really and look, and honestly, big Harmon energy. Big Harmon energy. <laughs> The Honestly, big, just like all I want to see surrealism. I just want to see yeah. a spinoff with Troy and Abed. That's all I want to yeah. see. Like oh, to yeah. me, they're 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 my Troy favorite and Abed characters. In the morning. Well, Troy and that and was I, that was the cool thing too. Like when Donald Glover left, when they're like, "Oh yeah, he's going on a sailing trip around the world with Lavar Burton," because he was like, "Hey, um, my career as Childish Gambino is going to take me way farther than this fucking NBC sitcom is going to." <laughs> I don't know. It was kind of like a heartfelt moment a little bit. Like, Do like Donald Glover had this giant, like, I wouldn't call it a Twitter rant, but this, like, multi-part, like, tweet where he was just, like, like writing things, just, like, his thoughts. He was just getting a lot out there. He was having a moment, I guess. But one of the things he tweeted, he was like, I'm still to this day worried Dan Harmon hates me for leaving community. And Dan Harmon, like, tweeted back at him. He was like, I would have been way, he's like, no, I don't hate you at all. I'm so proud of everything you've fucking done, dude. Like, it's like, yeah. if anything, I would have been mad at you if you That's put cool. your career on hold to stay on community. Because you're way more fucking talented than this fuck, like, than the show. Like, Harmon really, like, sung his <laughs> praises. Because he I, literally left to do Childish Gambino. Like, he, right. because Gambino was blowing yeah. up. And now we've gotten, like, it, it's cool to see that that really gave him that platform. Which, to be fair, Donald Glover's career has just been like a, a fucking fairy tale since the beginning. Yeah, like, dude, he was, really literally, he was you, in his undergrad at NYU. Threat? Yeah, he was in his have undergrad at NYU Atlanta? writing for Thirty Rock. Like, and have I've seen his stand-up. Yeah, have you watched the two seasons of Atlanta? That's on my queue. I still haven't seen it. I saw. I've watched a few episodes. Dude, I, watched a few I need. Episodes, I need to go through that. That I might be something I marathon all. like tomorrow. You. You. You absolutely should. It is so well written and it's so well acted, and and I'll tell you what, there's an episode in season two called Fubu, that literally, I mean, fucked me up. Like I I got teary eyed after it, and I like I was talking <laughs> to my buddy about it because we were watching it at the same time, and we talked about it for two weeks. We we're just like, I can't like because honestly, what's so weird about Atlanta is just how relatable it is. And, and, and let, I mean, here's the thing, right? I am a 30-something white man. Atlanta is not written for me, all right? I'll just say that. It's not written for yeah. me. But there's so many elements to it that I'm just like, man, it, I, I see, like, I get that. I feel that, right? I, but that, that episode, season two, season two was fucking amazing. Season one is amazing, too. The Juneteenth episode was just fucking out of this world. So highly recommend it. I just tell everyone, like, watch the two seasons of Atlanta because oh, yeah. it's some of the best television that's ever been produced. I'm watching Dave. So, uh, to go back to uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, the go ahead, original yeah. question of the most fucked up thing on Netflix, I have to say the most fucked up thing on Netflix I've seen is Gasper Knows Love. 
And the first five, never heard the of that. First five minutes of it. I love, I love Gaspar Noe as a director, and he's got some fucked up movies out there. Irreversible and Enter the Void, if you've ever heard of those. those they're cult yes. classics, but they are fucked up. And uh, so, Wait, love. Can we just... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no go no, ahead. No. What were you going to say? Well, no, I was no, just going to say, can we, can we just <laughs> take a, a moment to talk about Irreversible? Oh, oh my man. God. Can we? Can we? <laughs> because, because here's the thing about it, right? It's, it's terrible, right? It's, it's absolutely, I mean, like, like, 10 minutes, like terrible 10 minutes. in the sense of abhorrence, right? Not terrible yeah. cinematographically. No, 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 it's no, no, like, it's yeah, no, C- cinematography wise, I mean, the whole movie, it, it's a, it's a great movie. I highly recommend it, but the 10 minutes that are just like abhorrent <laughs> in terms of what's happening. Yes, yes. It's is yeah. it's, just, it's it's so like um it's but it's but not i don't want to say that it's relatable but it feel it's it feels real like i mean like there's a there's a level of realism to it that i just like, yeah it, yeah to me i, I think, think that's probably the know. scariest 10 minutes i've ever seen in film and i've watched the serbian if film if we've talked about this i don't know if we've talked about this before but I've seen commentary on this where it's talked about where like, so the, the scene that we're talking about is a rape scene. Yeah. And um, most, most cinematography, it's a fact, you know, in Hollywood and anywhere, they like romanticize that. rape. I mean, right. that's, just the, that's yeah. just the fact of it. Whenever it's on the silver screen, yeah, they I mean, make yeah, it out to yeah, be this kind of romanticized act, and the thing, the thing that is brutally punishing, I don't yet like the word artistically, but yeah, you are. Arti- well, I mean, but that's the truth. I get, I Hollywood, get, yeah, yeah, Hollywood I get it, I get it, I get, I get the meaning, I get the context I mean, behind it. I just don't like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I agree. I agree with. You I get 100%. the meaning, but I just. I, yeah, I get what you're talking I, about. I, I, just, I just don't I like agree. it. I don't like the practice of it. Well, no, no I, I a lot of people don't like to be confronted with that. Yeah, right. I, and I, I, I get it. I know what you're saying because I think what irreversible does. That's the first time, and, and maybe the only time. I don't know. I'm not versed in these things, but that's for me the first time that <laughs> I've seen rape as a visceral, uh, it's a evil, gut punch. punishing yeah. act that you're just like. Oh my God, is this what, I mean, because, you know, I think as human beings, we talk about things, we talk about terrible things, right? When we talk about someone passing away or dying or being raped, we talk about it without actually, we, we understand the concept, but we don't understand the details, right? We don't understand sort of yeah. what actually happens. When you watch Irreversible, they bear witness, they bear all of what actually, ha- I mean, what, what a rape looks and it's like. Rough. <laughs> and it's rough. Yeah. I mean, listen, Levi, not that I'm advocating that you ever see the Serbian <laughs> film. To me, overall, it's probably the most fucked up film I've ever seen. But I would say irreversible that the, the 10 minutes of that rape scene are the worst thing I've ever seen in film. Yeah. And I don't mean, like, not like... Yeah. I mean, like no, yeah, no, I, I, I get what you're saying. And so, yeah, I, I just, to me, it's just like, holy shit, like, that you know, but I think, hurt. but I think it, I think it's important, uh, you know, from a cinemagraphic point of view, in the sense that, you know, it's one of the, one of the only films that it's, it's showing, you know, just raw, like how horrible this is, you know, it's yeah. hard to watch. And then you realize how much of all of other, you know, cinema is uh, kind of, making this fantasy or this romanticized version of what's happening and stuff you know they, they, they sugarcoat it right so so i yeah I yeah okay, so yeah, um, I, I, I don't know if you've seen um on netflix they <laughs> did a, they did a movie uh, a few months ago called into the tall grass which is a stephen king joe Hill i haven't story. seen that yet yeah. okay so so here's the thing one of the things that i've noticed about when they make uh, film adaptations on Stephen King stories, and they did this within in the Tall Grass. I just recently, just this past week, read that short story. The ending was fucked up. 
the ending was like, oh shit, that's what really happened. But then when you watch the, the movie version, I just think, how could Stephen King sign off on it? Because the, the ending is just like this happy-go-lucky, like, oh, everything turns out okay, right? It's the same thing why I think one of the, the, uh, the movie The Mist, mm-hmm. uh, which is an adaptation of a, a, a Stephen King short story, is True. not necessarily one of the best movies, but the ending was just so real because, spoiler alert, sorry if you haven't seen it, <laughs> the, the yeah. end of the film, the guy shoots, basically, they, they're trying to get out of the mist. They realize they can't get out of it. So he ends up shooting the people that he's with, including his son. He's about to turn the gun on himself. And then the military shows up and he's saved. Like that's the ending of, of what would, would, would potentially happen if this event took place. They didn't sugarcoat it. They didn't go, oh, he, he made it, you know. And, and, and it goes back to a conversation that I've had with many people. And that is the problem with American films that I have is that they always, they always go look for the, the happy ending. They're always going for the happy ending. And I'm just like, look, you know, life. It's funny that you say that because the, there's an alternative ending, the dodgeball. And uh, <laughs> yes. in that alternative ending, they actually lose the, the big tournament. And they, mm-hmm. they called that in the commentary, they called that the European ending. Because right. in America, they knew that wouldn't fly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just read. I just read something. Uh, I just read it about another movie. I can't remember what it was, but I just read about another movie where the ending was, you know, like all this, like, oh, hey, hey everyone, you know, every everything worked out, but the original ending was was you know very dark and 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 it wasn't a happy ending, and and that to me is just, you know, irreversible is not an American film. And, and that's that's really, I mean, obviously, I understand why because American <laughs> yeah. cinematography wouldn't they would have they would have they would have sure coded it right. They would have done some kind of cutaway scene with the sounds, and they would have implied that she had been raped, but they would have never shown the actual rape. Yeah, it's a it's a rough rough movie <laughs> to say the least uh, well but it, what i was saying though is that so uh, one of the more fucked up things i've seen on netflix <laughs> is he's also directed a movie called love and love actually has unsimulated sex in it so like the first five minutes is like an actual porno oh, wow. and um if you can get past that if you can get past that fact the theme of love is amazing the idea of the film and stuff what he's what he's arching for artistically is an amazing you know like uh amazing uh aspiration to shoot for but i think that ultimately you know like you know once again american audiences and stuff it's uh it's not sugar-coated enough and it's it's very visceral and very surreal mm-hmm. have have you guys watched um horse girl with um the girl from Community. No, I've heard I good things. Not. About it, so I've seen the seen Netflix it? TV series Love, starring Gillian Jacobs from Community, which is no, what I thought so, Marshall was talking about at first. And, no, and there, it was so not. there's, a, there's a, a movie on Netflix. I haven't watched it yet. Um, called Horse Girl, and it looks really good. It looks really fucked up. I've heard great reviews about it. There's another movie that is on my watch list, and I can't remember the title. I just saw, I just read about it today. It's a horror film and it's basically about um, two guys that grow up in a UFO cult, cult and, hmm. and, and they go back oh. and they kind of re-examine their life and they Is realize it that it's like the way back or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. And, and I heard, yeah. uh, I've heard it's really good. So that's on my list of, of, of things to watch. Okay. <coughs> I, I will say the, the the I haven't watched anything that's really all that fucked up on Netflix, but I have been watching um the first and only season of Watchmen on HBO. Okay. And How uh, was that? man, let me tell you, it's <laughs> like I haven't seen it, but I know what happens. Like I looked up the synopsis because I don't have HBO right now. Yeah, I'm waiting for Barry to come back before I commit to that shit again. Um. So, so it, it, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm two episodes away from finishing it, 
but um dude th- i mean that that series has ripped the band-aid on race relations in america like they really? they show hmm, yeah wow. they show some things that it's just like that kind of just it, it kind of makes you rethink things in terms i and i know it's a show right so i understand yeah. that there's there's some element to it. it's like okay well it's it's pretend but they really they really um they they're not it's not outward in it's in it's commentary about race relations in america but it it really really focuses and plays upon sort of the the idea of of how race uh what the the factor of race okay. it's been it's been really good i highly recommend it the only issue is that um uh, I believe it's written by it was written by uh, Damian Lindor Lindoff Lindelof yeah Lindelof yeah and he has said that he is not um going to come back to it and HBO has basically come out and said um without him and his in his writing they're not going to do a second season which is a Dang. real shame wow yeah yeah but it's highly highly recommend it because can I, it's really can we good. take five real quick oh yeah okay I'll be back all right. <laughs> I get I thought he was just going to do a five minute long fart when he like <laughs> hit one of those. You guys been watching Dave? No, I want, I want to see it. It's I on Netflix. Definitely. Right? It's on Hulu. Hulu. Okay. Hulu, okay. Yeah, the Lil Dicky show. Oh, yeah. no. I, I love Lil Dicky. It's really good. The writing's really snappy. This last episode I had a lot of good heart. It was one of those punch to the gut episodes. I'm not going to spoil like, <laughs> what happens, but it was like, it was like, They've had a couple of those now this season. There, it's episode nine of season one. I think they only had plans for ten episodes for the first season. Really oh, good, I mean, really solid. It's had a couple punch to the gut moments, but then it it has the good comedic like a lot of care went into the show. And if you, you listen to little Dickie's music, you'll know what beats of the show <laughs> correspond to certain little Dicky songs, which I find nice. very interesting. Have you been watching the second season of uh, What We Do in the Shadows? No, I just got through the first season. Um, I I was a bit of a late start on what we do in the shadows. I just got uh, into it, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna watch that next. Dude, watch the uh, I, there. It fucking I'm digging hilarious. it. I love it so far. Like I, I watched yeah. like the the first season, and I I I haven't seen the original movie. I haven't seen with with Taika uh, Waititi and Jermaine Clement. I want to try to find that. I don't know if that's on Hulu or not. If it is, I'm gonna watch it because. I think I love, it is. I love anything involving Taika Waititi and, and Jermaine Clement. Like, I'm a huge Fly of the Concords fan from back on HBO, like, even back when I was a kid. Uh, Dude. Obviously, Taika Waititi with, you know, Thor and, and Jojo Rabbit, so. I So, I'm going to watch Jojo Rabbit next week, but the the What We Do in the Shadows movie is fucking amazing. Like, the whole thing is hilarious. I've the, heard that. But yeah, yeah, I really the, want to the, check the it out. The TV series has just has picked up right where they left off. It's it's amazing. I, it's to me, it's some of the best. It's it's some of the best comedic television that's on, cool. on that's been created. I like that. And season two has been just as strong as season one. Good, good. I was into it. I was into season one hard. So that that makes me feel good because I just marathon the freaking thing over the course of like a couple of days. So because those shows where like shows that are forty minutes in length, I have kind of some hard time marathoning but if it's like a sitcom or something that's like 20 30 minutes and you can just like i'll just like yeah. future man on hulu i did the same thing i just slammed through <laughs> i slammed through the first two seasons because i had seen it when it was new so when season three was about to come out i marathoned the show again to like refresh myself and then i marathoned season three and season three is not as strong as the first two seasons but it's still it's still good it's like always sunny where it's like a week a week season of always sunny it's, it's still good. It's still good TV. It's just right. not as good as the rest of Always Sunny. That's very much how Future Man is. It's not as good as seasons one and two, but it's still really good. Like, it, it gave me a lot of respect for Josh Hutcherson, because I'd only ever known him from, like, Zathura and The Hunger Games and RV with Robin Williams. The Robin Williams classic <laughs> RV. Um, have you seen The Man Seeking Woman on Hulu? I have. Was that good? That's I love Jay Baruchel, that. right? Or is I that love, yeah, yeah. something else? I love that show. It's so good. <laughs> I need to check that it's out. It's like a 
it's a hyperbole of what yeah. most single men go through. Yeah. Dude, and I just love Jay Baruchel, too. Like, I, I can I can watch that skinny little motherfucker all day, every day. She's out of my league. Is, is that good, good? Like, I oh watched that movie God. again about that. Like, two three months ago. It. I've never seen it. I need to watch that. It's, it's on oh. Netflix. I watched it when, when it was new. I rented yeah. the DVD. And then uh, I watched it again about three or four months ago. It's so good. Because I was just in a funk. I was in a funk. Three or four months ago, I went through a bad breakup and shit, and I watched that movie, and it just, it just, it's a feel good movie. Like it's a good, like yeah. it leaves you just feeling good inside. And it's and hard, it it's what? hard not to feel good when Jay Baruchel's being awkward. It has you know? one of the <laughs> best lines. It has one of the best lines in a movie when it, when he goes, uh, "Who fought? Who are? Uh, who who brought the good news, Bear? Give him some some, <laughs> some fucking honey." Yeah, yeah, you get you get some good uh, T.J. Miller action yeah but uh so you you want to end this yeah i think we're gonna i think that's gonna wrap us up you know we're approaching <laughs> we're approaching the two hour mark i try to keep these hour and a half to hour and 45 like i said we had that that the big chungus episode as i call it um so we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up i want to thank my boys berg and marshall from theft mart i'm gonna put a link in the description on the youtube video for this be sure to check them out um, um please be don't sure to, to check me out on the oh, episodes yeah. of theft mart watch the other episodes of theft mart because they got some cool fucking shit people get tased i tasted fake pee it's a can good I, time can i give a shout out real quick to yeah theft go for mart it podcast clips and episodes on facebook theft mart podcast, theft mart clips, podcast and episodes clips and episodes on, on facebook i'll have a link to that in the, the uh the description thank as you, well thank you. um as well as a link to the spotify um just because I don't think YouTube allows, like, I don't think YouTube lets you do the little cards to things that aren't also oh, yeah. on YouTube. Like, I think it only is, like, other YouTube channels. Um, but all, all the links will be down in, in the description. Um, so be sure you go check them out. Um, I want to thank you guys for being on. We kind of have a little tradition here on on the cast, on Marvin's room. I almost said quarantine oh, yeah. between. Uh, he, here on, on Marvin's room where I like to give my, my guests a chance to do a little Jerry Springer final thought action. So, Berg, we'll start with you. What's, <laughs> any final thoughts you want to throw out to the masses? Uh, listen, fucking stay at home, and if you have to go out, wear a goddamn mask. Let's fucking flatten this curve bullshit oh, so yeah. that we can get back to our lives. And uh, thanks for having us on. Can't wait to do it again. Marshall, what about you, bud? What do you got? Uh, First and foremost, Levi, thank you for having us on, man. This is awesome. I've loved, I've loved watching this, and uh, it's been a blast watching you with the other comedians and yeah, stuff. Yeah, man. I and uh, that. looking forward to life getting back to how it was, and hopefully oh, yeah. podcasting with you guys in real life sometime. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, ultimately, thank you for having us on. I want to thank Berg and Marshall for being on the show. You know, I really like that. Um, the thoughts that you guys had. And, you know, it, yeah, if you got to go out, wear a mask, you know, do what you can. Um, I actually had the idea. I, I wish I could have somebody with me. I actually want to film myself going to the store wearing a mask, but I'm wearing this and my coconut bra. And then when people give me weird looks, I'm going to be like, it's the mask, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I might just do that for fun just because you got you to take the fun where you can get it. Um, but this has been the first kind of official episode of Marvin's Room. Or if you want to sure, call sure. it that, you know, episode five of Quarantine in Between. I don't know what it's going to be. It's Marvin's Room. We're just going to call it that Marvin's Room title card here again for funny effect. Um, that's, a, <laughs> that's a note to editor Levi. <laughs> or I just won't put anything and I'll just make myself look like a jackass. Um, but I want to thank Berg and Marshall from Theft Mart for being on. And uh, as a wise man once said... The Good night. <laughs>